day four. Headed back into the spot. We're gonna hunt this big buck that Brian missed until we kill him or somebody else does. So, but we just left the truck. Right when we got here, Eric wouldn't wait for us, so he said we were taking too long. So he took off without us. But look what he forgot. I don't know if you can see this, but these are his prized Vortex binoculars. The single most important key ingredient in finding me out there. And we were taking too long, and so he just left us. He's lucky we're packing them. I think we should make, I think we should uh, probably play a trick on him. Yeah, definitely. I, I keep waiting to see him walk down the trail like, crap, I forgot my binoculars, but we haven't seen him yet. He'll realize he forgot him when he goes to class, obviously. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> Where are you going, buddy? To the truck, man. Why? Well, I was... Couldn't, couldn't wait for us at the truck. I was so proud to be ready so fast. I left without my binoculars, but I need to keep... Oh, you them. don't need those to hug. Let's just go have fun. No, I need the binoculars. No, let's go. Come on. Dude, you've got this. <laughs> Dude, just take, just take a little extra second at the Dude, truck. I was too excited. Make sure you have everything. That's okay. all. All right, guys, we're on the ridge. We have seen quite a few deer. A lot more deer this morning than we did yesterday morning. We found a little buck, but uh, he's pushing the does, which is good. The rut is coming on. If you guys are not hunters, hunters look forward to the rut because that's when the real big deer get kind of stupid and they're chasing the ladies. And the littler bucks usually will start rutting first, which I think is starting to happen right now. So. Hopefully the next couple days, the bigger bucks will get excited, but we're still looking for that giant. I haven't been able to turn him up, but we're going to keep trying. Right, Brian? Always try. Try your best. Try hard. Try hard and try your best. That's all you can do. It's going to happen. Eric's just been running around the ridge all day because he's cold. Are you cold? Eric's Except finding all the like bucks miles. 10 miles away. Every day, without fail, Eric builds a giant fire. Oh, it feels, it's gonna feel so good. It's freezing cold out here. By the time the sun, sun comes up, we've probably been sitting here for about two hours in the shade, so not moving very much. Building the fire is essential when you're on the mountain. Essential. It's true. I saw a comment on uh, yesterday's video. Someone asked if uh, we were worried about uh, the fire and the smell, the smoke smell, being on our clothes and scaring animals in general. Uh, what I can tell you is I don't believe that smoke scares animals. I don't think the smell of fire scares animals. Fire is a very natural thing that happens in the mountains. Uh, animals are used to smell of, of wood burning, if you will. Um, it's like when we were up in Nevada this year hunting early. The last day it just smelled like campfire. and The smoke like moved in and we were uh, wondering what the heck was going on. And it was just the fires from Oregon and Idaho that was causing the smell. But uh, it's not like all the animals ran away and hid. They're used to the smell. I actually read a book where Indians would uh, mask their scent when they were before they would hunt with the smell of smoke because animals know that smell. What's your thoughts? Uh, it feels good. <laughs> no, I, I think the same. Like, and plus the style of hunting we're doing right now, rifle hunting. I mean, the, where we're glassing for the bucks is so far away that this isn't gonna bother them at all. I had a fire yesterday. And I could see deer bedded, lit a fire. Nothing changed. So. I think, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a big, like a big deal. Brian? If we were bow hunting and we're trying to get deer right here within 50 yards, yeah, it'd probably going to be a big deal, but not the way we're hunting right now. I think generally we're always trying to keep the wind in our face anyway, so, you know, it's not going to be that big a deal. And like Eric said, rifle hunting, I'm not nearly as concerned about it as if I was archery. Look at this fire. It's so hot right now. <laughs> it's the same, actually the same color as your uh, 
We have a cute vest and hat, so it doesn't really matter. It just looks like we have four people up yeah. instead of three. There's just four people on the ridge. What's your guys' thoughts if you're hunters? Do you not have fires? I know I grew up uh, archery elk hunting with my dad, and it, we did not have fires. Even at camp at night, there was no fires to be had. I know we were worried about the smell, but the more I've hunted, the more I've realized um, the smell of smoke does not bother animals. In fact, like if an area burns, say like this canyon was to burn this year, the elk and the deer would be in here thick because what, after an area burns, really high protein food starts popping up and the animals love it so they're always in that smell and it smells like campfire if you've ever been through a burn it smells like campfire for years and they prefer to be in that kind of stuff because the, the high protein food that they can get in there so that's our thoughts what, what do you guys think rolling such a rookie huh Mm. Nothing like a hot can of soup up on the mountain to warm you up. Whew, that's really hot. Extremely hot. That thing's boiling already. What are you eating? Chicken corn chowder? Chicken corn chowder. I've tried all the soups and I seem to like the ones that are really creamy like this one when I'm up here. Instead of like a chicken noodle soup that's real runny, I like these real thick, creamy ones. Dang, I better pull that off of there. Owie, owie, owie. Oh boy. Nothing better than a warm meal on the mountain when it's cold. We usually have our uh, camp chef striker with us, but somebody forgot it. Uh, this guy and that guy. We all forgot him. So a can of soup on the fire is not bad. Except for the smoke blowing in my eyes. We're still glassing, guys. There's a, this mountain's funny, like you think you can see everything, so you would be able to see all the deer, but man, they just blend in. All right, we all just woke up from a nap. It was good, it was like an hour and a half, but Eric started glassing, check it out. Good eye. Man, that's so crazy. We haven't seen a buck on the hill all day. There's a buck, so. Why you gotta keep glassing? Same stuff over and over. Could be a big one over there. We just need to weed them out of the big stuff. We did see one buck down there this morning, but Eric forgot, obviously. But it's crazy, man. This hill this looks like it's open. You can see everything. But I've been glassing it all day, and all of a sudden this guy just steps out of nowhere. So stay patient behind the glass. Eric is what we call on fire. Ridge. We haven't seen any deer up there. Way up in that snow. We don't know how big he is yet. He hasn't come out, but I'm trying to get phone scope footage. But uh, he looks like he's a mature buck. Eric's in the zone, man. That's good. It's getting to be that prime time. It's about 3:30, so these deer should be getting up, moving, coming out. Hopefully. So I've seen a lot of questions on the videos recently of how we're, uh, how we feel. Deer and elk at a long ways away. We do it a couple different ways, but what works really the best and it's the lightest is we have what is called a phone scope. And so it's just an attachment that goes onto your iPhone. They make them for Android or whatever. And then you get the right one to match up on your spotter, which this is the Razer HD Vortex. But I mean, this deer that we're looking at right here is probably about 1500 yards away you can get pretty good footage. Oh, my battery's about to die. But that's how we do it. Um, like I said, you can get, we have cameras with doublers on them and stuff, and they get good footage, but if you're packing your spotting scope, you might as well just get a phone scope. All right, well, as you can see, it's uh, getting dark. We uh, stayed in that same spot all day long and picked it apart, and I, I'd have to say I'm pretty impressed in the job we did. We all glassed different deer and different bucks throughout the entire day, right yes. when we were it's a long, another long day on the mountain, but tell you what, that's hunting, and I'm really glad we're shooting this video this way because a lot of times we shoot for seven or ten days on a hunt, and then we cut it down to all the exciting stuff, and sometimes I think we leave out how uh, long and tiring this can be, this process, trying to find the deer to shoot, so I'm really enjoying shooting it this way and showing you guys. So there's some days that are really slow, and 
not too much action, but you go through those days to get to the good ones for sure, so. That's true, that's a good point. What are your thoughts on that? Hunting can be more of a mental game a lot of times than a physical game. And hunts like this, when you just sit in glass all day long, that's the biggest thing you have to overcome is staying positive and just knowing that if you keep going after it, you're gonna turn up something that is worth shooting. And that's kind of where we're at with this hunt. We both had some opportunities. Eric and I early on didn't capitalize and now we got to stay persistent and um, it can be mentally draining to sit around for eight to ten hours in one spot all day long but that's how we're going to shoot a big mature buck yep and that's how you're going to pack out this kindling right here oh it's a fire starter it's a fire starter <laughs> what Good is job, this Brian. guy a fire starter <laughs> well, okay. but yeah that's the way it goes like they said they said it better, better than i could but um it's a little after five right now and we noticed that our video hasn't uploaded. It's pretty crazy guys, we get home, we get home, not home, but we get to the hotel super late. We, you know, have to upload and uh, download all the video clips and uh, edit the video. And it literally takes well over the entire night to uh, fully upload to YouTube because of the Wi-Fi connection is, is just so poor there. Um, so we're having some problems. Yeah, so basically we start uploading it at night before we go to bed. We wake up in the morning and uh, check on it and it usually is like 70 to 80 percent done. It still has like an hour or two so then we leave the hotel hoping it just goes up like it's supposed to and the last two days it hasn't so hang with us. Yeah we're gonna rush to, to town grab a bite to eat and uh, get that video up so anyways guys thanks for tagging along we'll see you tomorrow.